What's up, everybody? Sloco here, represent MMA Topics, MMAMadhouse.com. Gonna be uh, going over the uh, just a few little things with you. It's my new vlog I'm gonna do every week. Just talk about the latest in MMA news and just you know have a good talk about every little thing. Um, so I'm gonna talk about just uh, right now the main thing I want to discuss is how uh, Michael Bisping is getting called out by everybody. I've already voiced my opinion on uh, you know MMA Topics and on my personal Facebook page, which you can add me on there, and I'll hit you up with the info. Um, but, you know, I've talked about on there, you know, just what I thought on the event. So that's all I'm going to say about that one. And, uh, but, you know, Chel Sonnen, you know, he is the king of the smack talk. I mean, I'm talking about if anyone could ever out-talk Chel Sonnen, many props to him. But um, he's called him out, which he was calling him out actually before the fight even took place Saturday night. He has some great Twitter comments he was saying about Michael Bisping. And then, um, you know, Vitor Belfort's calling him out. But that the Vitor Belfort one, I did some research on Twitter just because I got bored. And um, a lot of fans actually tweeted to Dana White, you know, after Bisping won to make this fight happen. Then, you know, Vitor saw it. He's like, hey, give me the fight. I want to come back in May. So it sounds like he wants it, and I'm I'm all with him on it. I hope it happens. I'm really, really, really wanting to see that fight. So, you know, I think right now Bisping's time is coming to an end. Um... You know, I made I wrote an article earlier today, and uh, I submitted it to MMA Madhouse. It should be posted later tonight, and uh, we'll get it posted for everybody to read. But it's called the um, Countdown uh, to Destruction or something like that. I can't remember actually what I titled it, but whatever I titled it was awesome. But either way, um, when I wrote that up, it's about Michael Bisping and about all this stuff that's taken place in the past few days. Definitely recommend you read it. Um, but anyway, uh, what I really want to discuss today is I want to talk about there's going to be a few fights coming up this week. I want to also I'm going to go over Alistair Overeem. That's right. I have to hit that touchy subject. And just, to, you know, a few other things just to talk about. But um, go ahead and talk about, you know, you got Thursday. You got UFC Live 3 on versus. It's going to be Martin Campman versus Diego Sanchez. Cool event. Um, Saturday night, you got Bellator 35 uh, kick off the welterweight tournament. And then you got... You know, Henderson versus Fajal on the Strike Force card. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to this week at MMA. I mean, you know, Saturday started off good, but then it just ends up this Saturday, ended it all the way and making it better. Then after that, you know, you got Shogun and Bones. <sighs> going to be a fight. All right, um, I'm ready to discuss Alistair Overeem. I've actually never talked about Overeem on video before, so now everybody gets to hear what my official opinion on Alistair Overeem is. I, Slowco. Respect Alistair Overeem. I think he is an awesome fighter. I think he's got amazing stand-up. He's got a decent ground game. One problem with Alistair Overeem. Okay, throughout his whole career, he has made a career of beating cans. Okay, he has submitted the. Uh, he has not submitted the best guys in the world. The best fighter he submitted was Vitor Belfort. B Vitor Belfort is a natural 195 pound man. He'll walk at about 210, 215, but he his natural weight's between 185 and 205. Okay, so congratulations, Overeem, for catching him a few years ago. He beat Sergey Karatanov in pride. Okay, with some knees. That's awesome. Okay. Then, you know, over him, he takes a career in K1. He starts his career off, I think he started out like 7-4. and four. And then, you know, he catches his wins over, you know, a few wins. And now he's, I think his record's 10-4 and four after winning the K1 Grand Prix. That's awesome that he won that tournament. Many, many props to the man for winning the tournament. That's cool. Um, the year before that, you know, he fought Bader Harry and he fought, you know, Remy Bojanski. Neither one of them actually entered the Grand Prix. Uh, Bader took a year off, which, you know, I'm ready to see him come back. I hear he's coming back in May. I'm not really a big K1 fan. I never really kept up with it, but I always watch, like watching Harry fight because I think he's just he's a he's crazy. I mean, he's a beast. But uh, you know, we got um just to talk more on him. You know, okay, his last big fight he truly had that where he fought a legit contender that's actually proven himself against elite competition was Sergey Karatana back in K1 Heroes in 2007. And that was my, it's my fight of the week, and it'll be posted in a few days. But, um, you know, Sergey Karatana, you know, he, he just, he hurt over him. And over him, starts running across the ring. Sergey clips him, over him falls to the ropes, bell rings, over, Sergey's hands raised. After that, he has, let's see, he goes, I believe it was 9-0 and uh, one no contest with Krokop. So in 10 fights, six of the competitors were coming off a loss, okay? Four other fights. 
Krokop was on a one-fight winning streak. He would lost two or three, though, at that point. Then he fought this guy, I think his name was, like, Tay Hyan Lee or something like that. Um, he is on a one-fight winning streak. His MMA record is one and two. Then he fought another guy, I think his name was Tony Sylvester, I believe is his name. Yes, yeah, he was on a one-fight winning streak. He had lost the fight before that to Chris Tusher. Really? Come on. Tusher is garbage. Sorry. Um, and then he beat uh, Paul Buentello. Uh, Buentello was on a four-fight winning streak. Of the four guys, the best opponent on there, Tank Abbott. Okay. If that justifies any case for how Alistair Overeem is a top five fighter, it scares me. I'll put him in my top five just so people will shut up on it. But true, all truthfulness, he's lucky to even be ranked seven on the bloody elbow. And the bloody elbow is the best ranking on the internet because they pull together like 10 to 12 people that all give their own personal ranking and they average it all into one. It's really cool. Um, You know, Overeem beat Brett Rogers. People are going to love on Brett Rogers, but why? I mean, I think he's a cool dude. Yeah, it's awesome. He worked at Sam's Club. I used to work at Sam's Club. Represent. That's awesome. Um, the best opponent Brett Rogers beat was Andre Arlovsky, and Arlovsky, his chin had went bye-bye at that point, so he got caught. But before that, he has not fought anyone worth mentioning. Okay, he bought, he beat a Bungo Humphrey. Okay, that's his, probably his best one, who is a natural uh, light heavyweight, who I think should even be at middleweight. So, I mean... No justice for the guy, okay? I'm sorry. I can't give him any justice, okay? Alistair Overeem, he's a good fighter. He's got the talent, but come on. For someone to say that right now, at this current moment in time, that he should, he has a legit right to be in the top, you know, even, let's say, top three of MMA rankings, because uh, MMA Topics has him at number one. I like the boys' MMA Topics, but I highly disagree with that ranking. He is no way, shape, or form proved to anyone why he is the number one heavyweight in the world. If he goes on to win the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix, he can be ranked number one. But until then, he has no business at number one or even in the top three at that. I can live if someone puts him at number four or five, I will not argue with him. I can respect that. But if you put him at number one, I'm gonna call you out on it like there's no tomorrow. So that's all I have to say about Alistair Overeem. Now the last, one more thing about the uh, Bisping Rivera topic. What do I think about both guys? What would I both call them to their faces after um, all of Rivera's po uh, pre-fight actions and how his uh, camps reacting after, and then also the Bisping's actions? What do I think of both guys? They're both dicks. They're annoying. They have no right to act the way they've been acting. So, fuck them. Alright, so anyway, that's all I got to say for today, you know, I'm going to just keep, uh, you know, doing weekly vlogs, it's just a sample of how I'm going to do things, it's going to be better, you know, weeks coming, get some better news in and all that, but it's just a little breakdown for this week, um, but check out MMA Topics uh, right now, I got uh, my uh, interview I did with uh, Ben Askren on there, and that was that was pretty cool, he hit me, I hit him up on Facebook, and uh, because I can, I found out it was actually his page and all that fun stuff, but uh. So I hit him up, gave him some questions, he answered them, so I got him posted on there. And then uh, I got some more interviews coming up, talked to a lot of good fighters. I've uh, got in touch with actually Dennis Seaver's uh, manager, and uh, I submitted some questions or whatever, and I had to, of course, use a German translator, so kind of nervous about that. Hopefully it sounds right. And uh, but anyway, here you go. Read this. It all makes sense. All right, go to MMAMadhouse.com. That's me telling you thanks right there. Look. Facebook.com, MMA Topics Gang, and then look, follow me on Twitter at Sloco Mania. All right, everyone, have a blessed week, great day, and remember, everybody, go check out MMAMadhouse.com. All right, have a good one, everybody, and I'll be cutting another video shortly.